What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a wide receiver top of the route chart. So what this is going to be is we're going to be going over three specific moves that you guys maybe have not heard of, maybe aren't sure about, maybe have not perfected at the top of the route. We're going to talk about what each one means, why we use this specific terminology, and how you guys can use it and what routes to use it on, okay? So again, this video was done by request, fellas. So if you guys have any kind of video feedback, any videos that you guys would like to see on this channel next, don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section below. We always appreciate it, and it's great to always hear from you guys. Now, let's get started with this video. So first one is going to be a heavy indicator cut. So some of you might have heard of this, but a heavy indicator cut is something that you guys could use on a dig route, an out route, a post route, a corner route, and hell, even maybe a slant or a five-yard out route. But essentially what it is, it's a single cut at the top, and it is something that you want to use when you are trying to really put the brakes on and make a tight change of direction. So let's watch this full speed. So this is a dig route where this wide receiver does a great job of being able to change direction on a single single step running full speed. Now, this heavy indicator cut ties into the three phases of the route that we like to talk about, right? So there's three phases of every route. Some of you, I guarantee, have heard me say this before. you got the stem, you got the break point, and then you have the acceleration, right? So the stem and the break point tie heavily together on this heavy indicator cut because on this stem, you cannot be jogging. You cannot be taking it half speed because, quite frankly, you do not need to use a heavy indicator cut. The heavy indicator is to be able to change direction right away. So this heavy indicator allows him to be able to run full speed and make a break going full speed, changing direction at a 90 degree spot, right? That is an incredibly easier thing to, to say than to actually do. And so many receivers struggle with this. Now, the mechanics behind this heavy indicator, it's just a single cut, is that you can turn your toe slightly, not a lot, you're not turning your toe completely down the 90 degree angle, but slightly to the direction that you are breaking, right? But you still wanna make sure that you are committing to it because here's what's gonna happen. If your shoulders and your hips are trying to get out of this thing too fast, you turn your toe, that puts a ton of pressure on your knee and that can lead to a lot of injury. So you have to make sure that this cut is inside your frame, your body is committed to selling vertical and that heavy indicator cut with the slight toe turn can drive you straight out because the thing about that heavy indicator cut is when you make that cut to be able to make the tight, the tight change of direction that you need, you have to push off of this cut. Now I'm not saying strike the ground on the arch of your foot because that's going to hurt you, right? I'm saying you want to strike the ground on the, like not the inside arch, but the whole arch of your foot. So that middle part of your foot, and then you want to push off the inside arch simply because you angled the step of that toe. That is the key with this specific cut. If he was running a post route, and let's say he was breaking off of this foot, or if he was running a corner route, excuse me, let's say he was running a corner route and he was breaking off of this foot, that foot could be slightly turned. But you just have to make sure that that cut stays inside of your frame when you decide to do this heavy indicator cut. So that's when you'd want to use it. You could use this. I like it against zone coverage because, you know, it's not a move that does too much. It's not going to make you lose timing with the quarterback and I like it in man coverage just you have to make sure that I'm selling the move bringing my upper body with the cut so it stays inside of my frame and I don't waste any time at the top of the route let's watch it again full speed great job by this receiver making that tight 90 degree change of direction off of that single cut so now next move triple rocker step so I'm sure this is, you guys have probably all heard of a rocker step before, but now what is a triple rocker step and how do we actually use that? Okay. Now, before we get into a triple rocker step, fellas, I want to talk to you guys about a great opportunity that you can have this off season to work with myself and my staff of coaches. We are going to be traveling out to seven different cities across the United States. We've already traveled to three states. We've already gone to Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona. Now we are coming out to Newark, New Jersey. This camp is completely sold out, but then we're going to be coming out to Atlanta, Columbus, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, and Los Angeles for two day long, two day long, four hours each day, quarterback and wide receiver training camps. I would really consider them clinics because we are limiting spots to only 10 to 12 guys per position group per age group. Okay. So this is going to be very, very detailed coaching. This is not one of those camps where you show up and there's a line of a hundred people to get in. This is a camp where you show up, you're going to be a position group of maybe 10 guys, and you're going to get coached on every single rep. That is our brand. And that is is what we were trying to get across. So many camps do it incorrectly. So many camps just, let's run as many kids as we can through here. That's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to help you guys improve so you will have long-term value from a camp like this. So if you guys are interested in something like that and you guys are local to one of these seven or six states that we are traveling out to, fellas, we'd love to have you out. We really love our YouTube community and we really want to help your guys' skills improve and this is a great opportunity for you guys to do that with myself and my staff of coaches. So check out that very first link in the description below if you guys want some more information on that. Let's get 
get back to this video. So now, triple rocker step, right? So what is a triple rocker step? So we've all talked about a rocker step before, so let's go to this next clip. So we're looking at this clip from Cooper Cup, and Cooper Cup will use this triple rocker in every single game that he has played this year if you pull up film. He uses it on, you could use it on out routes, you could use it on post routes, corner routes, and hell, even dig routes. Those are the only four, though, because this is a longer developing move. You would not want to do this on like a slant route or an out route. It's just too quick. It doesn't serve any purpose. You're not getting any depth, but you would use it on these four moves. Post, corners, outs, and 10 yard ends, 12 yard ends, 12 yard digs, what have you. Okay. So now everybody knows the rocker step, right? Like let's say if you were running an out route, you would step with your outside foot, then inside foot. So you'd go one, two, and you'd break off of this foot to run the out. Now this triple move is to set up a talented DB. A DB who's maybe expecting that. So like, let's say you're a guy who likes to run a lot of rocker steps, right? You like to run a lot of like, let's say you like to run a lot of post routes off the rocker where you go left foot, right foot. So you go bam, bam, and then break on the post. Now, maybe a DB's expecting that. So that's when you would use a triple rocker step. So let's play this thing full speed. So Cooper Cup does one, two, three at the top of the break, right? It's not just one, two, it's one, two, three. So he comes off here. It is one, two, three. Just to get that DB to sit on that extra step and try to anticipate what we were doing. Again, the wide receiver position, fellas, when it comes to picking moves, when it comes to deciding what you were going to do, it is all about not making yourself predictable. Because again, you might not be going up against a talented DB who looks for stuff like this, but I guarantee you if you have a talented DB coach or defensive coordinator on the other side of the ball, he will pick up on these things. He will tell his guy, this receiver, his go-to move is to do a one-two and then go run a post. So my logic, I have to start thinking like a DB. I have to start thinking like a defensive coordinator. How can I make my routes look the same to where they have to watch my hips, they have to stay disciplined, and I sell the route with my hips so I know I'm going to get separation is that DB is guessing and he is always going to be a step behind me. So that's where that triple rocker comes into place. You see how Cooper Cup, he goes inside move, outside move, back to the inside move. And you see how his upper body is selling this route. His upper body is what's going to get this DB to jump to the inside and actually stepping there. Those three steps, some people call it like a tic-tac-toe break. If that helps the process for you, that's fine. But I would say what helps you remember when you do this triple rocker step is you want to step to the side that you are opposite of breaking first. So on a rocker step, you would step to the side that you are running first. So you would go right, then left in this case. Now you would step opposite of where you are running when you want to do a three-step. You'd go left, right, left, because the left side is the opposite of the out route that you were trying to run. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys kind of get what I'm saying right there because I know that's a lot of information, but again, that triple rocker step is a great thing to add to your tool belt when you feel like you're getting a little bit one-dimensional. Guys are starting to sit on the rocker step. Guys are starting to kind of get down your speed, get down your timing because it just makes your routes look the same. This looks like a regular rocker step post from Cooper Cup. Looks like he's just going one, two, going to break off on the post, but instead he takes one, he puts his foot in the ground, takes one extra step and is able to get that DB off and the separation he gets is like no other, right? Let's watch again full speed one more time. Great job by Cooper Cup closing space. One, two, three at the top of the break. Triple rocker step to sell that post route. Okay, so now this clip right here. So the next move, we're going to go back to the top, is going to be a square cut slash fake throw by. So Square cut, like some people call this a box cut. Like I, I'm cool with either name, whatever helps it process for you. If square cut is a different terminology for you, that is fine. Like the, again, there's not one way of doing things, fellas. There's like in terms of terminology, right? The concepts are all the same. The breaks are all the same. The moves are all the same. You just have to know what to do and when to do it. The, the names don't really matter, right? Like the, again, if you know what to do and you know when to do it, then it, it don't matter what the name of the route is, okay? It doesn't matter what the name of the move is. It's good for kind of like memorization and knowing what you're doing if you're more of a beginner, but you just got to know what it is. So box cut, square cut, this is more of a fake throw by move, but it's the same kind of box cut or square cut, if you will, okay? So now this situation, this square cut, I like it when you have to run an inside breaking route with an inside release and you're trying to sell an out route, okay? So now let's watch this receiver. So he takes the inside release and he's running a dig route. So he's trying to make this DB think that he is running an out. So it's a box cut because essentially you take like four steps. It does not have to be a perfect four steps, but you have to make sure that we are taking at the very, very like, like minimum four steps to sell the move. And it has to threaten the DB to this blind spot, right? So this move sells a fake throw by. 
Okay, so it's like you're throwing him by. Like, so it would be inside release and you have to run a 10 yard out. How would you do that? You get the DB to flip his hips, you'd swat him by and you'd slip back underneath, right? And the quarterback give you the ball. That's what we're trying to sell on this. Or it'd be no different than if you had to run like an outside breaking route and you were trying to sell like a fake throw by like you were running a dig route because it would be like you took an outside release and this DB's inside shade and you have to run an in route. You would just throw him by and go. So they're the two situations you could use it. I only like this move on a dig and I only like this move on an out. That's it. Those, and, and it's got to be deeper. It's got to be like 10 to 12. And if it's an out route, it needs to be a longer developing out route. So it's not a timing 10 yard speed out. It is going to be like a, like the quarterback is sprinting out and maybe we have like a flood concept here and you're taking this thing up a little bit deeper. Okay. So I need to make that very clear that this move is a longer developing move. So it is not a first read situation and it is not a timing situation. Okay. So now this fake throw by, like I said, they call it a box cut because, or a square cut because there's four corners in a square. So you want to take four steps. One, two, three, four four, five. He took five steps, right? Like I said, steps don't matter. But what we were trying to do, essentially the, the concept of the break is that you would break on the inside foot. So you would go right, left, right, left. And that second left step, this one right here would threaten the DB who's here to that blind spot underneath, force him to turn. And then we could get separation on the dig. That's essentially what it is. So it's really, you snap down right here, so you snap in your hips down, then you give that head fake to the blind spot, right? Because we're trying to sell that we were doing the throw by technique, trying to slip back underneath. It's a fake throw by off of the box cut. And that little fake throw by, it's very important that when we do this move that I drop my hips violently because when I drop that pad level, that puts him on the alert. And then when I fake to that blind spot, I got to make sure that I sell with my upper half. I drop my hips violently and then I make sure that the upper half sells to the blind spot or sells back underneath to get him to hesitate, get him to flip his hips, what have you, so I can get separation on this dig. Because when we can get him to stop those feet and I have to run that inside breaking route, I got a ton of space to be able to accelerate and widen the gap with this DB. Let's watch the thing again full speed. I know it's kind of a more complicated move, but there's a lot of things that you need to know about that. that the steps don't necessarily matter. The name of it doesn't matter. It's just the concept. Let's sell the fake throw by. Let's threaten the blind spot, get him to sit and be able to accelerate under. Let's watch it again. Full speed. Great job getting hands off, taking the inside release, selling the fake throw by, and then breaking this thing back off over the middle. Now, a lot of people say, fellas, oh, it's too complicated. You just got to go run the route, and make the move. Again, I say this for the guys who have no clue. For the guys who have never seen this move, for the guys who don't understand how to use the move, and they need a little bit more structure, right? I, I, I think that, you know, for, for sure, the amount of people that get benefit out of this channel and get benefit out of the stuff that we do can appreciate the fact that we go into the detail work and we actually talk about the little things rather than just say, hey, go run this clip. I can't stand the people who try to call, claim themselves to be trainers and coaches and they just show the clip. They don't explain how to do it because simply they don't know how to do it. That's why. They don't know how to actually explain to someone Somebody, hey, this is what you need to do. This is the goal of it. This is how you get better. And those little details, maybe you don't need to hear those details. Maybe you're already advanced. Maybe you've done it a few times, but there are guys out there who don't and who actually need the detail work. So I just want to make sure that we get that across with each one of these moves. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. I really appreciate the feedback always that you guys give on this channel. Don't hesitate to leave um, any comments that you have in the comment section. Really appreciate it. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those below as well. And again, fellas, we would absolutely love to have you out to one of our off-season training camps in Georgia. We're coming out to Newark. That one is sold out, like I said, but then we're coming out to Atlanta, Columbus, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, and Los Angeles. So if you guys want to travel out to one of those cities or you're local to it, want to get some working with us on these days for two whole days, four hours each day, eight hours total of training. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.